In a world first, researchers have created cloned mice from freeze-dried skin cells. The research aims to help conservationists revive populations of endangered species. The freeze-dried skin cells had been stored for nine months before cloning was attempted. Even though the freeze-drying process killed the skin cells, scientists were able to create cloned embryos with them. The embryos were used to create stem cells that will be used in further research. Recently, more work on xenotransplantation has been published. This time, two genetically modified pig hearts were successfully transplanted into two brain-dead individuals who were being kept on ventilators. Until last year, xenotransplants, the transplant of an animal organ to a human, had only been tested in monkeys. The first xenotransplant in a deceased human on life support took place in September 2021 and used a pig kidney. This was followed by the transplant of a pig heart into a living human, Mr. David Bennett, in January 2022. Unfortunately, Mr. Bennett, who was already very sick, died two months after the transplant. Xenotransplants are getting a lot of scientific attention recently because they offer a promising, realistic solution to the worldwide shortage of donor organs. Next up, we're looking at some spinal cord research where three monkeys whose arms were partially paralysed have had some movement restored after having an implant placed in their neck. Restoring movement in upper limbs is very difficult because arm movements are more complex than leg movements. Electrical stimulation has previously been used on paralysed arms in people, but the surgeries are very invasive and they require complicated software. This is why a team of scientists have begun to develop a simpler and more effective way of restoring movement in upper limbs that is currently showing promising results in monkeys. A group of scientists are developing a cure for genetic heart conditions which can cause sudden death. The treatment of genetic cardiomyopathy has been very successful in animal studies. Cardiomyopathy is a genetic heart muscle disease which can cause sudden death in any age. People with the condition have a 50-50 risk of passing faulty genes onto each of their children and often several members of the same family develop heart failure. Every week in the UK, 12 people under the age of 35 die of an undiagnosed heart condition, very often caused by cardiomyopathy. The team are hoping to develop a jab that will use a precise genetic technique to silence faulty genes. The technique has already been shown to work in animal studies and if successful in human trials, the gene therapy will be a once in a generation opportunity to relieve families of the suffering caused by inheritable genetic disease. A universal coronavirus vaccine that can protect against COVID-19 and the common cold is being developed using mice. Researchers at the Francis Crick Institute have discovered that a specific area of the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is a good target for a pan-coronavirus jab that could offer protection against all the COVID-19 variants and common colds. On the 5th of July, 1996, the most famous sheep of all time was born. This year marks the 25th anniversary since the birth of Dolly the sheep. Back then, researchers at the Rosalind Institute of the University of Edinburgh became the first people to successfully birth a lamb in the laboratory without using an egg or sperm, but from the DNA taken from an adult's sheep's mammary gland. Dolly remains infamous to this day as the first mammal to be cloned using DNA from an adult cell. To find out more about Dolly and how her creation has contributed to scientific progress, Read our recent article, which is linked in the description below. At UAR, we focus on communicating how animals are used in scientific research. However, animal research happens alongside the various non-animal technologies that are available to use. There is a general consensus that more research needs to be done into non-animal technologies so that we can reduce the number of animals used. This month, the National Centre for the Three R's published its strategy for the next two years. The new strategy sets out to spend 75% of grant funding on replacement technologies for animal research. This doesn't mean that the NC3Rs are moving away from research into methods of reduction and refinement, but they want to put a greater focus on getting new alternatives accepted into regular use. And this is very welcomed by the scientific community. 
And lastly, at the end of June, the UK government released its annual statistics on the number of animals used in scientific, medical and veterinary research in 2021. The figures show that just over 3 million procedures were carried out in Great Britain in 2021, which is 6% more than in 2020, where we saw a significant drop due to the pandemic. Over 96% of the procedures carried out in 2021 were on mice, fish, rats and birds. Cats, dogs and primates who have further protection in British law were used in 0.2% of all procedures in 2021. It is worth noting that half of all procedures carried out in Great Britain in 2021 were carried out by 10 organisations. You can see a detailed breakdown of the Home Office statistics and further information on the 10 organisations and the research that they undertake on our website. That's all from us this month. Further information on all of the news stories mentioned in this video can be found in our monthly news roundup, which is linked in the description below. Thank you for listening and don't forget to subscribe for more animal research news.